welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum is a spectrum of seven different types of electromagnetic radiation. Radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. You need to learn the electromagnetic spectrum in order, relating it to wavelength, frequency and energy. Wavelength is the length of a single wave. This is given the symbol lambda and is measured in metres. It ranges from very long into the thousands of metres for radio waves down to picometers for gamma rays. We're focusing on visible light for our calculations today and it's often more convenient to work in nanometers. One nanometer equals one times ten to the minus nine metres. Visible light is then in the hundreds of nanometers scale. Frequency of a wave measures how many waves pass a point in a second. It's given the symbol F and is measured in hertz, or per second. For visible light, it is around 10 to the 14 per second in scale. As frequency increases, wavelength decreases, and vice versa. You can use this to help remember the order. The higher energy waves, the gamma waves, have the highest frequency and the smallest wavelength. Frequency and wavelength are linked together through the speed of light. This is given the symbol C and the value 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. You can find this on page 22 of your databook. The speed of light equals the frequency multiplied by the wavelength of a wave. You can find this on page 4 of your databook. Let's have a look at some calculations involving the speed of light, frequency and wavelength. Light from a sodium vapour lamp has a frequency of 5.09 times 10 to the 14 per second. Calculate the wavelength of this light in nanometers. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to write out the equation. C equals frequency multiplied by lambda. We've been given the frequency in the question as 5.09 times 10 to the 14. And we know that C equals 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second. We are trying to find lambda, so we need to rearrange the equation for lambda. Lambda equals the speed of light divided by the frequency. We can then insert the numbers. We have 3 times 10 to the 8 metres per second divided by the frequency 5.09 times 10 to the 14. This gives a wavelength of 5.89 times 10 to the minus 7 metres. The question asks for the wavelength to be in nanometers. One thing that we can do is to move the decimal point so that we eventually get to times 10 to the minus 9, which would give us nanometers. This will give us 589 times 10 to the minus, minus 9 metres times 10 to the minus 9 metres is equivalent to a nanometer, so the wavelength is 589 nanometers. Let's try a second example. Potassium flame is lilac and it has a wavelength of 405 nanometers. Calculate the frequency of the light. We're going to start by writing out the equation C equals F lambda. In the question we have been given the wavelength. We've been given this as nanometers so we need to convert this into metres. So this will be 405 times 10 to the minus 9 metres. We're trying to calculate frequency, so we can rearrange the equation for frequency, which will be the speed of light divided by the wavelength. We can then insert the values. So we have the constant for speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8, divided by the wavelength in metres, which is 405 times 10 to the minus 9. Frequency will then come out to be 7.4 times 10 to the 14 per second. For visible light, frequencies often are within this 10 to the 14 range. Pause the video now and try these two questions. For this first example, we're going to start by writing out the equation. So we have C equals F lambda. In the question, we have been given the wavelength, which is 389 nanometers. 
we need to convert that into metres before we start. So it's 389 times 10 to the minus 9 metres. We can rearrange the equation for frequency, which equals the speed of light divided by lambda. We can then put in the numbers. We have frequency equals 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 389 times 10 to the minus 9. This gives a frequency of 7.71 times 10 to the 14 per second. In this second example, we're calculating wavelength. Start with the equation C equals F lambda. Within the equation, we've been given the frequency. We can rearrange for lambda, which equals C divided by frequency. Lambda then equals 3 times 10 to the 8 divided by 2 times 10 to the 14. This gives a lambda, a lambda of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. We're asked for the wavelength to be in nanometers, so we need to alter this so that we have times 10 to the minus 9. Therefore, lambda will be 1,500 times 10 to the minus 9 meters, which equals 1,500 nanometers. We are focusing on visible light. Visible light is a spectrum of all the colours of the rainbow. If atoms are exposed to energy, electrons can be excited to higher energy levels. To do this, they absorb specific energy. This can be seen in the dark lines of the absorption spectrum. If they relax back to ground state, they release this energy. This can be seen in the emission spectrum. Because only specific energy is absorbed or released, we call this quantized. The energy can be calculated by using Planck's constant. Planck's constant is given the symbol h and is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. You can find this on page 22 of your databook. Energy of a photon of light is equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency of that photon. Because we can relate frequency to wavelength through the C equals F lambda equation, this energy equation can also be written as energy equals Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by lambda. Let's calculate the energy of a photon of light. This photon of light has a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 14 per second. The first thing we're going to do is to write out the equation. Energy equals Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency. Planck's constant is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds. The frequency is given in the question. We get a value of energy for this photon as 3.98 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Calculate the energy of a photon of light responsible for the green line in a cadmium emission spectrum. There is more than one way to tackle this question. You can either use the combined equation E equals HC over lambda or you can use F equals C divided by lambda and then E equals HF. I would recommend using this equation as it will reduce the number of rounding errors that you may introduce. You need to look at page 15 of the databook to find the cadmium emission spectrum and the green line has a wavelength of 509 nanometers. We need to convert this into meters before we begin. That's 509 times 10 to the minus 9. E is then equal to Planck's constant multiplied by the speed of light divided by the wavelength. You're best to make sure that you put this into your calculator correctly using brackets or calculate the first line uh, leaving your answer on the screen and then divide by the wavelength. That will give us 1.989 times 10 to the minus 25 for the first line, divided by the wavelength, which then overall gives an energy of 3.91 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. 
Pause the video now and try these two examples. For this first example, we're calculating the energy of a photon using frequency. The equation that we will use is E equals HF. H is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34, multiplied by the frequency 4.9 times 10 to the 14. This gives an energy of 3.25 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. In the second example, we have a wavelength, so we can use the equation E equals HC over lambda. The wavelength has been given as 620 nanometers. It's important that we convert this first into meters, so times 10 to the minus 9 meters before we begin. We then have Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34, multiplied by the speed of light, divided by the frequency. If you do the top line first and leave it on your calculator, you'll get 1.989 times 10 to the minus divided by the wavelength. And this will give an energy of 3.21 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. As you can see, the values produced for a single photon are very small. In chemistry, we tend to work on a larger scale. So we scale the energy up to be a per mole of photons by multiplying by Avogadro's constant. Avogadro's constant is given the symbol L and is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. You can find this on page 22 of your databook. This then produces very large values. So we divide by 1000 to get values in kilojoules per mole, which are much more manageable. As with before, we can either work with E equals LHF now, or we can substitute frequency for C divided by lambda. This is the more common equation that we use as you do tend to be given wavelengths to work with or is a wavelength you're trying to calculate. Calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole for photons with a frequency of 5.40 times 10 to the 14 per second. Here we're going to use the equation E equals LHF. L is Avogadro's constant, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. H is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34. And F in the question is 5.40 times 10 to the 14. We multiply these values together to get the energy of one mole of photons. This gives us a value of 215,528 joules per mole. This is a very large value, so we're going to divide by 1,000 to get into kilojoules. As you can see, I've taken this to three significant figures. That is because in the question, we also have three significant figures. Calculate the energy of a mole of photons responsible for the violet line in a mercury emission spectrum. There are two ways we can tackle this. We can either have E equals HC over lambda, or we can find the frequency using C over lambda and then use E equals LHF. The second method can introduce some rounding errors, so we're probably best to use this first method. First of all, we need to look on page 15 of the databook to find the wavelength that we need to use. This wavelength is 405 nanometers. We need to turn this into meters before we begin. So we have 405 times 10 to the minus 9 meters. We can then insert the values. First, we have Avogadro's constant multiplied by Planck's constant, multiplied by the speed of light. All of this is then divided by the wavelength. You're best to do the top line first and leave this on your calculator and then divide by the wavelength. This will give you a value that you will soon come to recognise on your calculator. which you can then divide by the wavelength. 
This will give an energy in joules per mole of 295,649. We're then going to divide by 1,000 to get into kilojoules per mole. Again, we're matching a number of significant figures to that in the question. Pause the video now and try these three examples. Calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole of light with a frequency of 5.10 times 10 to the 14. We're going to use the equation E equals LHF. L is Avogadro's constant. H is Planck's constant. And then F is the frequency from the question. We multiply those together to get an energy, which will be in joules per mole, of 203,554 joules per mole. Our answer needs to be in kilojoules per mole, so we're going to divide by 1,000 to give 204 kilojoules per, per mole. Calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole of light with a wavelength of 671 nanometers. For this question, we're going to use E equals LHC over lambda. The wavelength that we've been given is 671 nanometers. We need to turn that into meters before we begin. So that's 671 times 10 to the minus 9. Energy then equals Avogadro's constant 6.02 times 10 to the 23 multiplied by Planck's constant 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 multiplied by the speed of light 3 times 10 to the 8 all divided by the wavelength in meters 671 times 10 to the minus 9. If we calculate the top line first we get 0 0.1 one one nine seven three seven eight divided by the wavelength. If we do that then we get an energy which is in joules per mole of 178,447 joules per mole. We need this to be in kilojoules so we'll divide by a thousand to get 178 kilojoules per mole. In the last question calculate the energy in kilojoules per mole of a mole of photons responsible for the blue line in a cadmium vapour lamp. Here we're going to be using E equals LHC over lambda. You can find lambda on page 15 of your data book, looking up the cadmium vapour section and looking for the blue line. You'll find that the wavelength is 480 nanometers. In metres, this is 480 times 10 to the minus 9. We're then going to multiply Avogadro's constant by Planck's constant, by the speed of light, and divide by the wavelength. Doing the top line first and leaving it on our calculator, we get 0 0.1197378 divided by the wavelength. And this gives us an energy of 249,000 454 joules per mole. We're going to divide by a thousand to get our final answer of 249 kilojoules per mole. Thank you for watching my video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now.